Hi everyone, I'm Andy Rutherford, lead pastor at Columbus First. Uh, after a season of transition for the church, pastoral leadership wise, uh, my family and I arrived in August of last year, right in the middle of COVID and uh, have found ourselves among a great group of people. I uh, just wanna say a personal thanks to uh, Pastor Stan Lautner, to the great staff here who managed so well and so diligently loved and cared for and led the church during that season of transition. Uh, as you know, these have been incredible days of change in the life of the church. And yet uh, I look around at the uh, landscape of our church here and our folks uh, love one another. They are engaged in the mission of the church and that is to be a church of disciples that makes disciples. Uh, we continue to minister to the community through Kids First. It's our daycare and uh, they have done a tremendous job of loving and encouraging the families in our community as well as we support uh, foster families in need and that has been a tremendous blessing as well. Uh, the days ahead are days of great hope and great opportunity. Uh, I think these are the best days the church has ever seen. The great days of opportunity that are before us are unlike the days behind us. So we have to think about new ways in which we can connect and share the hope of Jesus Christ with a lost world. Uh, we took in nine new Nazarenes this year. Our giving is up. Uh, the morale is high and the folks here in Columbus look forward to serving God and serving within the context of the Church of the Nazarene in the days ahead. God bless. Hi, I'm Paul Blair, pastor of the Calvary Community Fellowship, Church of the Nazarene in Columbus, Indiana. Uh, this conference year, the church has been able to continue its area support for the Salvation Army, both with food items and clothes items. We took on three children at Christmas time, and one person in the church wanted it to be children of prisoners, so we worked through that program and provided Christmas for three uh, children of prisoners. Uh, we were happy to uh, participate in providing food items and cleaning items for the group that went to Appalachia and uh, had a four-day, four-service revival in April that was very good. And then we had the Lacrones in for a Sunday uh, when some of their situation was changed and hopefully we were a blessing to them. So God has been good, and uh, we keep looking up, and uh, hope we have a better year this year. I have the privilege of pastoring the people of the Nashville Parkview Church of the Nazarene in beautiful Brown County, Indiana. And we are continuing to strive to love God, to love others, and to love big. One example of the ways we are doing that is David. We've been praying for David for many years now, and David actually made a profession of faith this past year, and I had the privilege of baptizing him just before Easter. It's been a real joy to just watch David continue to grow in the Lord and see how God has been working in his life this past year. We also had the privilege of hiring Pastor Josh and Jennifer Kaplinger and their daughters and bringing them on staff with us, and they have been just a beautiful addition to our church family. Pastor Josh has been focusing in on youth and outreach, and we're really excited to see what happens this next year as we continue to partner with Pastor Josh and reach out in our community to make a difference for the kingdom. A few additional highlights. We participated in a short mission trip to support Appalachia Reach Out in Kentucky during their disaster relief efforts. We hosted three community food pantries and distributed food to over 100 families. We baptized three and we welcomed seven new members into our church. Our Wednesday night ministry has been continuing to grow, children and youth, and it's been really exciting to see these ministries continue to impact kids with the gospel of Jesus Christ in our community through this past year. This past year, we've witnessed God working through our members to impact our community, and we believe that greater days are ahead. We're excited to see how God continues to use Parkview to love big in our community and around the world. Respectfully submitted, Pastor Jason Riggle. Hey everyone, my name is Tim Lickley and I pastor the Brownstown Church of the Nazarene and it is a privilege today to deliver the report for this past church year to each and every one of you. As I think back of the last 12 months of ministry in our church, uh, I'm reminded that God has been faithful to not only our, our congregation as a whole, but God has been faithful to do uh, his transformational work in the lives of individuals. And I'm reminded of uh, one story, an individual by the name of 
with Michael. Michael grew up in the church, but as he grew older and as he began to experience life and uh, began to experience adulthood, Michael began to drift from his faith. He began to become very skeptical of Christianity and probably would even tell you skeptical of organized religion in general. Uh, but over the last 12 months, Michael began attending and God began to do a work in his life. And little by little, God began to chisel away at Michael's heart. And not very long ago, Michael stood up and, and gave his full testimony to our congregation and just shared about all the ways that God uh, was working in his life and all the new things that God was teaching him. And he testified that he was willing and ready and, and wanting to do whatever God asked him to do. He's got connected to our ministries. He's, he's involved in our Sunday school. And uh, we're just so excited to see what God is doing in his life. And Michael is just one example of what God is doing in our church and in, in the individuals of our church. Um, Brownstown Nazarene has also had an opportunity to continue to build relationships with our community. Uh, this past year, we uh, sent gifts and cards of, of appreciation to every teacher uh, in the Brownstown, Brownstown school system, just thanking them for all their hard work through this pandemic year and letting them know how much we appreciate them. And we've got lots of positive feedback concerning that. And uh, we know that that's just one small way that God is using us to build relationships with our community. We are excited about what God is doing. We're excited about where God is taking us. And we believe that better days are still to come as we seek God's face and as we obediently follow him. God has been good to us and uh, we are indeed excited about the future. Thank you so much. Uh, respectfully submit it, Pastor Tim. Hi, my name's Steve Green. I've been the lead pastor here at The Point in Seymour, Indiana since uh, June of 2002. All of us have felt the negative impact of COVID-19. But isn't it amazing that even in the middle of a global pandemic, God is still at work. He continues to transform hearts and lives. This year, we've gotten to know a new family who actually started attending our services online all because of COVID. Zachary Cranmore was married and a father of two small children. Zach testified to being an alcoholic and a drug addict, but as a husband and father, he began searching for a new and better path for his life. He wanted something better for his family. Zach and his family had some serious concerns about attending because of COVID. They didn't feel comfortable uh, coming in person, and so they decided to look for a church they could attend online. That's how they came to the point. Well, since then, Zach's been reading the Bible every day. He started watching messages on our website and, and asked for archived sermons. Zach has now listened to hundreds of messages since coming to the point because he's listened to every message all the way back to 2004. He felt compelled to get involved in serving, so he signed up to come in and he's been cleaning windows here at the church each month since March. Keep in mind, he'd never attended a service in person. And yet, Zach and his family were online every week, and Zach was serving, communicating with us every week. Several from the church were able to pray for the Cranmores following the recent birth of their third child who spent the first couple of weeks of his life in the neonatal intensive care unit in Indianapolis. Well, on Sunday, June 12th, Zach and his family made their way down the aisle of the point for the very first time right here in this worship center. Zach was coming to be baptized uh, before a gathering of his family and friends. Zach and his wife have testified to the significant transformation that has taken place in their lives since coming to Jesus and since getting connected to the point online. The Cranmores are making plans now to attend services for the very first time this coming week. It's been such a blessing to see how God is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine, even in the middle of this pandemic. Our focus remains beyond the four walls, and our mission is to point more and more people to Jesus. We rejoice with the angels in heaven over these lives and this family that has been changed forever. God gets all the glory for the great things he has done. What an interesting year we had at Kurtz. We celebrated four water baptisms and had many answers to prayer. We worshiped most of the year, 
through the radio waves and over live broadcast on the internet, made possible by a Lilly grant, which we were very great, grateful to receive. So the gospel of Jesus Christ was preached and those heard and lives were changed in spite of all the pandemic. Respectfully submitted, Floyd Fisher. Hi, I'm Pastor Dale Brecker. I am pastor of the Freetown Church of Nazarene in Freetown, Indiana. And uh, I've been here going on six years. So it's kind of a new something for me because I've never been in the church longer than five years. So this is uncharted territories. Um, the church is going through some growth, but the growth is really not in numbers, but more in spiritual growth. Um, I have seen so many changes in the people here that it's it's very exciting. Um, I, I heard of an argument the other day, and who's going to teach a Sunday school class? You know, at, at the adult Sunday school class. So I think that's really kind of neat to to see people wanting to serve God in, in 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 different ways, ways that they never dreamed they would possibly serve in. And I think that's kind of neat. And the spiritual growth that they are starting to really understand the word, get into the word, and not only get into the word, but having the word get into them and uh, see their lives being changed a little at a time, but it's a journey. Um, the story I want to talk about um, today is is a story about a guy who came to church. He was transformed. He'd been in jail several times, and, and he came to church, and he gave his heart and life to Christ. And through this pandemic and shutting the church down, he... Got his eyes off from God and got it back on his old friends and the old habits and and uh, ended up back in jail again. And uh, I went to see him and, and uh, it was kind of a nice thing to see because I only get 20 minutes to see him in jail, but the 20 minutes seem so long because he's not trying to find a way. He's not trying to explain his reasons why. He says, I'm here because I messed up. And he says, there's a God that's bigger than me. And he says that I recommitted my life back to Christ. And and things didn't work out like he planned. He didn't get out when he wanted to get out, but he got out. And but he's still transformed. He's been forgiven again. You see, the Bible says, if you return to me, I'll return to you. And he did return to Christ. And Christ returned to him. And uh so he's again coming back to church again with a with a really super good attitude and, and a life that's transformed. And uh, he knows what it's like. Oh, it he has his struggles, and uh, everybody does. And uh, but he says there's a God bigger than he is, and if he depends on God, he will he will get through it. And uh, those are the stories I like to hear. And those are, that's kind of what's happening here in church. People in the church are starting to talk to other people about the church, and people are invited in, inviting other people to church and. And this is, this is where it starts, is when people grab the vision, grab the missional vision of the people outside the church that need Christ to, to have that burden to bring them in to the church, to a place where they can serve God, and find God, and be part of a family of God. Thank you.